We are here at Citrix Synergy in Atlanta, Georgia, and I'm speaking with uh, Carissa Stringer. How are you doing today? I'm very good, thank you. Can you tell us a little bit about your role at the company and uh, what you're doing here with Citrix? Sure, so um, again, Carissa Stringer. So I am the Senior Director of Product Marketing for the uh, Citrix Virtual Apps and Desktops product. So I fall within the workspace organization. And of course, I'm here at Synergy telling all the new exciting news we have on the app and desktop virtualization front. And there's been a lot of announcements uh, at the keynote yesterday, mostly around uh, the workspace, right? Maybe you can tell us a little bit for people that aren't attending the show and maybe don't know much about what you've been doing. Can you tell us uh, what are the, the new areas that you guys have been doing with uh, Workspace? Yeah, sure. Um, so the big announcements are, if you really kind of take a step back from you know the way Citrix has progressed over time, if you think about Citrix as a app and desktop virtualization, the services that we've provided in that front for years, you know there's been a lot of recognition there. So mm -hmm. we've always been able to do that. We've always been kind of this interface between the your business apps and desktops and your end users so right delivering your virtual apps and desktops so last year at synergy we made a big announcement that we were going bigger and broader with that and really delivering a digital workspace so we like to think of that as the first step there was organizing work so giving you a centralized access to not just your virtual apps and desktops but fading in your SaaS applications, your web applications, your mobile applications, right? And then bringing right. in all the data feeds as well. So that would have been taking you to Synergy last year. This year, we took it one step farther, and that's adding a layer of intelligence into the workspace. So that was probably the biggest announcement to come out of um, Keynote and the workspace front. So being able to be that interface to all your applications. And I, I actually really love, we, we always use this example of a copier. Yeah. How a lot of people come in and you look at a copier and it has all these hundreds of buttons. If you think of an application, it, it's designed, you know, this application has to be designed for the most advanced user. But if I come into a copier, me, myself, I typically only push one button copy. There's right. tons of other buttons. I'm not really sure what they do. I'm sure there are lovely people in the world that are able to use those, but that's not necessarily what I need right. to be productive. So I thought that was a great analogy because we're kind of doing some of that on the workspace front. So from yeah. being that kind of interchange on the, you know, between the applications themselves, being able to pull out those high frequency tasks and make them available to make users more productive, um, and really introducing that layer of intelligence into the right. workspace. I think uh, they had an example of Maria, the, yes. the desktop worker, <laughs> that had all these different applications and she was trying to switch back and forth and then have to remember where the location of the buttons and how do I use the menus because all the programs are really different. They're not, and it looks like Workspace is kind of pulling that all in and making it so that you have that same consistent look and feel between all your different apps that you're using and being able to jump from one task to the next. Yeah, right? and having it all in a centralized location so you can go from approving expense reports, PTO, you know, whatever it needs within your entire workflow so you can process and move through it very quickly. Now, what's the process for if you had an application you wanted to bring it into that you have some way of rolling that into uh, workspace? Yes, yeah, so they, in parallel, right, so that was Maria being the end user experience, and then we had the IT admin experience. So in parallel to be able to build those kind of resource feeds, you know, of those productivity tasks, we introduced a micro app builder. So that make it very easy for mm. anybody to be able to, you know, integrate their application into the Citrix workspace. So what's some of the other things that, uh, was announced at the that you're excited about. Um, so being in the virtualization space, I do a, a lot of integration work and in, with Microsoft. So okay. I think it was super exciting to have Brad Anderson from Microsoft on stage at the Synergy keynote. So it's always great to have a big Microsoft presence at keynote. We've had a lot of Microsoft folks have joined us for breakout sessions. Um, if I think there's some of the key Microsoft announcements. Obviously, we're doing a lot on the uh, office integration front. Right. So uh, we've done a lot in the past on optimizing the performance of Skype for Business. 
in a virtualized environment. Now as Microsoft kind of made that transition into Teams, we're bringing a lot of the same optimization technologies we've had for Skype for Business. We're bringing that to Teams, making it easier to optimize Teams in a virtual environment. And then to complement the intelligent workspace announcements, we're actually you know, synchronizing some of that intelligence so that you could actually quickly go from the Citrix workspace, could pull in Teams activities, or within Teams, I can then display some of the new Citrix um, workspace productivity actions. It seems to be there's a lot of synergy between Teams and Workspace. The just the interface is very similar, where you have you know your um, it's almost like a social media you know your your news feed uh, per se. And if you're part of the group, you get notifications and, and all that. So uh, I thought that was pretty interesting that you guys are doing that. Um, on the, you know, VDI is really hot and app virtualization. And um, maybe you can talk about where you see where it is now and where you see it in six to 12 months. Sure. Um, I know we were just chatting here as we were setting up. Um, you know, Microsoft, I could kind of continue with the Microsoft conversation, is putting a big emphasis on Windows Virtual Desktop, which right. is super exciting for everybody who's been in the virtualization space. They're really shining a spotlight on all the capabilities that, you know, that App and Desktop Virtualization can do. And of course, um, partnering that with their investment in Azure, because obviously it becomes very logical that if you're hosting your App and right. Desktops, um, on Azure, there's a virtualization aspect that comes into play there. So uh, they've announced Windows Virtual Desktop. Obviously, Citrix, of course, being in lockstep with them, that we are going to extend a lot of the benefits of Windows Virtual Desktop with the Citrix uh, Virtual App and Desktop service. One of the key areas of focus we usually quickly talk about is Windows 10 multi-session. So the fact that Microsoft is going to, for the first time ever, bring multi-session capabilities to a Windows 10 client operating system, and they're going to do that on Azure. I think that's super exciting for the virtualization community, um, and obviously very excited that Citrix is there to be a part of it. Well, it seems like a great part, you know, you guys have a lot of synergy together between Microsoft and uh, Citrix, so it just makes sense. Yeah. Um, so where do you see 12 months from now, do you see tighter integration between Microsoft and uh, and Citrix or you know where do you see things going from I think if you you know where I see the future or the potential for the future is obviously if you get more into the machine learning and automation mm -hmm. uh, so one of the other exciting announcement that we've had at the event is some of the integration we've done with ServiceNow so let me take that as maybe an example and then kind sure. of build upon it but um, like say right now you're using ServiceNow as your IT service management solution. You have a user who comes in, they need access to a new resource, right? A new virtual app, a new virtual desktop. Now between the integration between ServiceNow and Citrix, plus the integration with Microsoft, we can actually go through that process to say the user requests it and we can automate that workflow all the way through. So the user has actually automated the provisioning of the app, the resources on Azure are automatically provisioned for them and the user's up and running. It ties to that bigger productivity message. Right. Um, but I think there's a lot of potential on that front. Some of the other announcements that we've had and really where I can see a lot more integration is um, we've announced user analytics, but the other big synergy announcement was performance analytics. So how is this user's experience in a virtualized environment, right. right? How is the allocations of resources available to that individual? Should it be something maybe this individual would have a better experience, but would drive better productivity if I assign them more hardware resources or improve their graphics capabilities or anything? To me, there is so much potential and synergies there that we can do. We're just on the very cusp of the potential. Right. So the. With the analytics now, it seems like it, it's a it's a way to look at the user experience and see the root cause of it uh, fairly easily, you know, because it, uh, it gives them some kind of a score, right? If yeah, it scores them. But uh, so some of it, I think, is very interesting because I like to draw the comparison between some of the monitoring that you might have today 
which is this is an issue you kind of need to go fix it the interesting thing about some of the analytics is it's actually building a profile so right it's anticipating what that user needs based on the type of user and it could do it from a security perspective it could do it from a performance so now it's not just saying you set a threshold it's actually there's machine learning capabilities where it's actually learning about that resource or that individual to make sure then you know as it dials those performance thresholds there's a layer of intelligence built in very neat yeah mm -hmm. Well, it was a pleasure speaking with you, and uh, we hope you have a great s rest of the show. No, great. I, I really appreciate you asking me to be on, the, on camera here today. Great. Thank you so much. Thanks.